Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, fellow siblings in Christ. Hope all is well with each and every single one of you guys. <clears throat> I promised y'all I was going to do a, a pre-recorded video. And here I am right now. I wanted to, I wanted to do a live, and this probably would have been the topic on this. And I may touch on this, Lord willing, for me to do this live. But a message like this cannot wait. It can't wait. And what is exactly the message of the night? There's many who aren't ready. There's many who aren't prepared. Well, what do I mean by that? What's going on right here, right now? It's like such a rushing situation happening. Time is going by very fast. Time has been flying by. And as time has flown by, we have seen various um, infections. I I'm going to try to word it because you know how YouTube is. Free, free speech is always free as long as you agree. That's another topic one day. But various diseases are out here now. Um, if you've noticed, the shelves are starting to get bare in stores. Whether it's food supplies, whether it's um, survival gear, whether it's um, anything basic like oil for your car. Gas prices going up, inflation is going on. It's such a thing that's going on. If you've even looked up, there's certain supplies you can't get to no more. Unless you live on a coastal area where the supplies can just come on in. But if you live in the Midwest like I do, things are hard to come by. And you'll have to buy things in bulk quickly. Because supply is going away and going away and going away. And if things are going away, the supply is getting short. The demand is getting higher. There's more issues that's raising about to the part where you're going to wonder if there's going to be supplies for like places like hospitals. If um, first responders are able to get the things that they need in order to be out here fighting fires, catching criminals, things of that nature. It may sound like I'm rambling, but I need you guys to start thinking about these things. Why? As it is in the day of Noah, but as it is in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the return of the Lord is here. And right now, this is what we're seeing. We're now we're not only seeing supplies going scarce, but here's what's really happening here: the devil is putting himself out there on Front Street. You can turn on the television, you can look at a movie, you can get online on one of these social media apps, you can hear it in casual conversation. You can be at your local store and hear it. You can be at a family gathering and hear things that Satan has implemented to cause division, to cause confusion, to make people not even think about things that's going on now that's biblically coming to pass, where there's um, natural disasters in diverse places, where there's death all over the place, where... So much is going on. A famine is coming across this land and it's more than just food. And I'm going to get to that in a sec. It's getting more and more crucial out here. And yet people aren't paying attention to the warnings. Just like in the days of Noah and Lot. That's why I brought that scripture up. Noah was warning his people repeatedly what the Lord told him. The rain is coming. The flood is coming. The Flood is coming. And these people constantly mock Noah over and over and over. Oh, Noah's drunk, man. Noah drunk. He Noah's drunk. He he he's he's out of his mind. Ain't no rain coming like that. All the while Noah is building the ark. Exactly how the Lord instructed him. Over a hundred plus years, hammering and hammering and designing and hammering and designing and hammering. Just making sure that the ark is built exactly to the letter of how God wanted him to build it. So that when the first drops started to fall and Noah was gathering all the animals, male and female, one male, one female, to go into this ark, one after the other, until finally Noah, his family, the animals got in the ark, and God shut the door. And the rain came heavy. And those that did not prepare, 
those who did not heed the warnings, those who mocked and scoffed at God because Noah was obedient to the Lord's warning, those who mocked and scoffed at Noah, when that flood came through and that terror flooded over them, no pun intended, when that fear came over them, the thought had to hit them. Noah warned me. Noah told me that the flood was coming. And now here it is. Flood is coming up from your feet to your knees, to your waist, to your stomach, to your chest, to your neck, to your head, to your can't breathe. Here it go. Here it go. And now here we are. Here we are thousands of years later. And another flood is coming. But that flood is going to involve the wrath of God to a degree where, as it says in the word, it won't be water. It'll be fire. The wrath of God is going to be poured out. And there will not be a sinner that can survive it. The only way to survive the wrath of God, the only way to survive this flood that's going to come through is that you have to be covered in the blood of Jesus. You have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You have to be sealed with the Holy Ghost. You have to have that so that God knows he's one of mine. She's one of mine. He, she will be with me. But those who refuse to take heed to the warning. Those who refuse to take heed to the warning. And it doesn't matter if your mom or your dad was in church since you was a baby. It doesn't matter if you were the pastor. Basically, by the time you got dipped in the water till you came out. It doesn't matter if you've been to church every single day. As long as you can remember, you've tithed. You have given to this. You have cast out devils. You've even spoken in tongues if your life was not lined up with the Lord. If your soul wasn't lined up with Christ, if you weren't truly focused on God, all the way in, all the way through, all the way out, if you didn't repent every single day, seeking the Lord to be better, seeking the Lord so that you can line up with his will and be better off because you want God and not just for vanity things. Skip that. You want the Lord because he loves you. That is the true nature of that relationship. He loves you first and therefore Hey, let me serve the Lord all the days of my life because I love him. Let me be about God every single day. Let me praise him. Let me worship him. Let me evangelize. Let me do what God is let me do what God has called for me to do because I love him. Not because I'm trying to get a brand new car. Not because I'm trying to get a bigger church. Not because I want to get a big platform on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter, or Snapchat, or whatever app you're trying to use. Not because I want to be a big celebrity in Hollywood. Not because I want to have the, the most luxurious this, the most luxurious that. It's because I want to be with the Lord forever. He said that if I dine with him, he dine with me. If I answer that knock on my heart, he'll let me follow him. He'll come into my life. And therefore, I live for him forever. He's promised a mansion in heaven that I'll be able to cast my crown before the throne of the Lord. That I'll be able to worship God and love him because he loved me so much that he died and rose again for me. He took the punishment I'm worthy to take because I'm the one that sinned. I'm the one that did wrong. And yet God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall receive everlasting life. But guess what? Many folks want to go John 3, 18 because they don't want God, because they don't want to prepare. They don't want to follow his will. They don't want to follow his way, so therefore they are already condemned unless they repent and be serious about the Lord. So many aren't prepared. Many think they are. But if God was to do an oil check, I ain't talking about checking your car. I'm talking about oil check. Do you have the oil that the Lord has required of you to have? Many of y'all want to have enough oil to fry fish. Many of y'all wouldn't have enough oil to light your lamp and be able to be with the wedding supper of the Lamb. 
and be like the five foolish virgins where you try to buy the oil. And by the time you get back, the door's already closed. Depart from me. I never knew you. Fellow siblings in the Lord, take heed to this. Take heed to this. Don't be like one of those that waited and waited and waited until the very last second to get ready. I know of many a folk who, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, including my wife, have warned time and time again, something is on the horizon. And yet they're just going, la, 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 la. So when it comes, they don't have excuse because God has warned. God said he's coming. Jesus is coming. We know not the day or the hour, but God can do anything but lie. Jesus indeed is coming. I know there's going to be people that are even going to look at this. Some that I know from my hometown. Some that I know my whole life. Some I've never known, but going to come across this, and they're going to say some mocking stuff like, he ain't coming, man, he ain't coming, bump it. And they'll be the same ones who I feel terribly sorry for because they had chances. They had chances. I wish I could quote David Wilkinson right, but he said something to this degree, so I'm going to paraphrase. One of the scariest things you'll ever experience in a lake of fire isn't just the burning because the flame will die not. Isn't just the worm that's going to go through you because the worm dies not. It's going to be the part where you're going to start thinking about it even in that horrible pain. Dang. I had a shot. There were people that were warning me even in videos, in person. There were people who I loved that tried to warn me. There were people that I never knew, but they saw me that one time and they tried to warn me. There were times I was in church and the preacher tried to warn me. There were times where there was a street preacher that was trying to give me a gospel track or trying to give me a Bible and he and she tried to warn me. But I wouldn't listen. I didn't want to listen because I wanted to be my own God. The devil tried to do the same thing and now I'm down here with him forever. Instead of being with the real God, the devil duped me. And now, weeping and gnashing of teeth for eternity. Siblings in Christ, don't forsake the warning. Forsake the world. Forsake sin. Forsake everything that's going to distract you from God. Jesus is coming. This ain't a game. Jesus is coming. Heed the warning. Do the opposite of the people that, that didn't listen to Noah. Take heed to the warning and prepare. Because when the sky turns black, when the sun no longer gives its light, when the moon turns to blood, when the stars fall down, when everything's come to pass, the sky cracks open, and here comes Jesus, too little, too late. Take heed. Jesus is coming. This ain't a game. This is not a game at all. Time's ticking. We're in these end times right now. Make your decision and make it quickly. This is a Joshua 24, 15 moment. Choose who you serve and stand on. Playtime's over. Ain't no halfway in, halfway out. Jesus is coming. Be prepared. Because eternity is guaranteed. And it's your choice where you want to go and spend eternity. Jesus is coming. God bless.